All right, so we're going to go over some um, basic uh, Rhino commands. So when you open up this file, we'll start off at the very top up here, where it has um, join. So uh, before we go into this, just a few, uh, one way that the Rhino works is through this command line. And it works um, three basic ways, um, two of which I use most often. Uh, one is if you uh, just click on an icon. So for example, to join is this join icon with the two puzzle pieces. So I can click on this icon and essentially I just need to follow the command line. Select object for, uh, for join. I can come over here and I can click on all these individual lines and it's now joined them together. Right, I'm going to go to edit undo. Uh, another way I can um, use, use a command is just to type it. Uh, I do not have to click over here near my command line like my mouse is over here and I can just click, I can start to type. So as soon as I hit J uh, there's only two commands that start with J, it's join and join edge. Uh, but as soon as I type in the rest, join, again, it's just asking me for uh, which objects to join. I can select all those. And then now it joins them together. Uh, and then I'm going to hit undo one last time. Or the last way uh, is through um, these tools that are up here. So these are uh, also different commands, uh, or the same commands, but just a different way of getting to them. Um, so the, the two ways that I use most often is either typing in a, a command or clicking the icon. I'll join these one last time. Uh, and that's the join command. Uh, the next one is explode. So again, you could either type it in or here at the icon, explode. So uh, explode select objects to explode, select this object and hit enter. And now it's exploded this into individual objects. Uh, again, I'm going to explain one other thing when, when, um, when using these commands. I'm going to go to edit undo so that it's one object again. Uh, when I hit uh, the explode icon, at the very end, it says press enter when done. So whenever you're using Rhino, there's actually three different ways to hit enter. Uh, one is obviously with the enter key. The other one is with the space bar. And for those of you who are familiar with AutoCAD, the last one is right clicking with your mouse button. Uh, so whichever one you prefer, uh, either right click with your mouse button, the space bar, or the enter key. They're all the same ways of hitting uh, or saying enter. Uh, the same thing with, uh, so now we're going to move on to group. All right, so these are three individual objects. Um, I'm going to click the group icon or type in group. Select all three of them and hit enter. And now let's group these objects. So the difference between join and group, with join, it takes these individual lines and makes them into a brand new object. But in order to join something, these um, these lines have to be touching. So like the endpoints of these lines need to touch. In order to group something, they can just be random objects or any type of object and they don't even have to touch. And it's just placing them in, um, in, a, in a common area together. Uh, and uh, again, the last one is a way to ungroup. So again, you could either click the icon or you can just type in ungroup. and hit enter and it ungroups these objects. Um, a few uh, basic commands that, that are really useful when using Rhino. I'm going to zoom in over here. One of them is called the grid snap and it's located down here. I'm going to turn a couple of these off. Uh, it, there's grid snap. Um, if by any chance if you happen to have any of these turned on where it says grid snap, ortho, planar, object snap, Smart track, gumball, record history. Just make sure you have everything turned off and only turn on grid snap. And I'm going to click on polyline. So essentially, what grid snap does is it, as you're clicking, it's snapping to the grid, which, if you have your grid set up in a very specific way, can be very useful. Um, I use it depending on what I'm trying to do. Uh, so as I'm clicking along, 
I know that my um, I've set up my grid so that each one of these little blocks is exactly one inch. So as I'm clicking along, I know I'm I'm moving in in increments of one inch. Uh, there's grid snap and ortho is one I use more often. Uh, so I'm going to turn grid snap off, and I'm going to be turning grid snap and ortho on and off through this uh, through this exercise. Uh, so I'm going to turn ortho on. I'm going to go back to my uh, polyline tool. I'm going to click, and because ortho is on, it's only allowing me to move orthogonally. So either zero degrees, ninety degrees. 180 degrees or 270 degrees. So it's doing something similar to grid snap. The only difference is I'm not confined to only snapping on the grid. Uh, if I want to, I can turn off ortho while I'm still clicking. And now I'm able to click in any direction that I want. The shortcut for turning ortho on and off is the shift key. So if I hold down the shift key, uh, I can turn ortho, ortho on, or if I let go, ortho turns back off again. Or I could always just turn it on or off by clicking down here. <clears throat> so another useful um, tool to, to have turned on is O-Snap, or Object Snap. And what Object Snap does is it snaps to certain parts of the object. So I'm going to turn on uh, Object Snap down here. Uh, for now, I'm going to turn Ortho on as well. So I'm going to also I'm going to draw a line. And what I want to do is the first one is I want to start near the end. So I want to make sure that it's actually clicking towards the end. If yours is not clicking, just make sure you have a check mark by it. Uh, some really useful ones to have turned on are these five. So endpoint near, uh, point sometimes is a pretty good one, mid, intersection, and perpendicular. So I'm going to start off with end. I'm going to click near the endpoint, and I'll just move my mouse straight up, for example, and I'll click again. Uh, for near is I'm going to repeat the same command. Uh, in order to repeat a command, uh, if you just type the spacebar, it repeats the exact same ca same command you just you just use. Uh, so I'm gonna click somewhere near this line, and then move my mouse straight out. Again, I'm gonna repeat the command. I can click on the midpoint uh, intersection. Is this area down here? I can turn ortho off. And now I've clicked from the intersection to somewhere near this line. And the last one is perpendicular. So again, I'm going to hit spacebar to repeat the line command. I can snap somewhere near this line. Okay. Somewhere near this line. And I'm going to make sure that I'm snapping to where it says perpendicular. The same thing can be done in anywhere where you're snapping near this line and going perpendicular. So a few uh, useful object snaps to have turned on. Uh, smart track. <clears throat> Again, it's also a useful one to, to either turn on or off depending on what you're doing. So say for example, I want to draw, I want to start drawing a line right where this point and this point touch in this general location. So one thing I can do, say for example, is I can make a rectangle, make two clicks, it gives me that location, and now I can start drawing my line. I'll turn ortho on, and I can come back here, select that rectangle, and just delete. Just hit delete on my keyboard, and now I have that location. Um, that's too many clicks. So if I had Smart Track turned on, I can start clicking uh, a polyline. And I'm going to click near this endpoint. I'm sorry. I'm not going to click on it. I'm just going to like hover near it. And I'm going to hover near this endpoint. And I'm also going to hover near this endpoint. And I'm going to move my mouse straight down. And it should be giving me these two gray lines or kind of like these guidelines. And it's snapping to the intersection. And if I click right there, 
and I now move my mouse. It's just, it's essentially snapping in that same location where this point and that point meet. Right. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna start by clicking, or I'm sorry, I'm gonna start by hovering over this point and that point, and I'm gonna move my mouse back until I'm at that intersection. And then I'm going to start moving my mouse in, um, towards the right. And now I'm going to hover over this midpoint and move my line, move my mouse straight up until it's snapping to where it says perpendicular intersection. And I was able to snap to those very specific points without having to draw any other lines. So again, that smart track, uh, it can be really useful. Uh, again, just any one of these, whenever you just need them, just turn them on or off. Grid snap, ortho, object snap, and smart track. Uh, so now we go to the uh, some of the more basic commands. So here's the move command. So I'm going to use the move command uh, five different times. The shortcut for move is just M, enter. Uh, I'm always used to hitting the space bar. So I always hit M and then the space bar. And then I'm just following the command line. Select objects to move. And select that one. Again, hit enter, I use my spacebar. And from that endpoint to this endpoint. And then again, I'll just keep hitting the spacebar to repeat the command again. And for this last one, I'm going to make sure I snap from the midpoint, the bottom midpoint, to the endpoint. So that's move. Uh, the copy command, again, uh, you can just type in copy, copy, select objects to copy. Uh, I select the object, I hit enter, and I'm going to click on the endpoint, and I'm going to continue to copy this object around. And what the copy command does is it will continue to run until I hit the escape key. And some commands will run this way where they continue to run until you hit the escape button. Just hit it once or twice and it stops the copy command. Uh, next is rotate. I'm going to take this, uh, or I'm gonna, I'll type in rotate. Select object to rotate. I select the first one, again, press enter when done. I'll click on this uh, bottom left corner. I'll move my mouse to the, uh, to the right, and then I'll move my mouse straight up. And as I'm doing this, the reason why it's snapping in this general uh, direction, or snapping in 90 degrees, is because I have ortho turned on, which for now is OK. So I have ortho on, moving my mouse straight up, and I've now rotated it 90 degrees. I could also uh, rotate uh, by snapping. Uh, so I'll hit the spacebar to repeat the rotate command. And I'll rotate this object again from there to there to there. So I'm snapping. I'll do that again. Uh, rotate from clicking on this endpoint. I clicked on the bottom left endpoint, the bottom right endpoint, and then I'll click on this top endpoint. Or I can actually type in the degrees that I want. So I'm going to uh, hit spacebar to repeat the rotate command. I'll click on the bottom left corner. And say, for example, I want to rotate this 45 degrees. So I just type in 45. Hit enter. And now it's rotated at 45 degrees. On the last one, I can rotate it again, except this time I want this top endpoint to map to touch this object. So I want to make sure it's uh, clicking on the intersection, so it actually touches that object, and I've rotated it that way. So a couple different ways of using the rotate command. Uh, so here's the scale command. So again, I'm going to type in scale. A um, couple different ways of using it. I'm going to select this object, hit enter. I'm going to click on this bottom left point, or bottom left endpoint. And I'm going to type in 2, 
enter. So I've now scaled that object twice as big. Or I can repeat the scale command. Select this object. Again, click on this bottom uh, left corner and type in 0.5, enter. And now it's reduced it by half. So now I'm back to where I started. Or another useful way of using the scale command is, say for example, I want this line down here at the bottom to match up to be equivalent to, this, to the length of this line. So the first thing I want to do is I want to move this object. So I'm move, or type in move. Uh, move it from this endpoint to this endpoint. And then I'm going to type in scale. And only select this object, hit enter. And I'm going to need to make three, three different, uh, click on three different points. So I want to start my scale here, this top, this endpoint. I want this endpoint to match this endpoint. So I now I've scaled that object dependent on the length of that line. Uh, another useful scale command is scale1d. So again, I'm going to type in scale1d. I'll select this object, hit enter. And what scale1d does is it's dependent on which direction you click. So for example, if we start off at the bottom left and click on the going straight up and click on that top endpoint, and if I move my mouse, it's only scaling it in that one direction. All right, I'm going to hit uh, Edit Undo. If I would, if I were to have had Object Snap or Grid Snap turned on, again scale one D. I can actually start to snap on which location that I want. Or if I were to have it turned off, I'm going to turn grid snap off. I'm going to zoom in on here really quick. And I can see that this line, it's actually covering three units. So from here to here is one, two, and three. Because my units are in inches, which is telling me down here, I know this is three inches. So I can also use my scale1d command. And I'll type it in right now, scale1d. I can also use it to tell it to say, okay, this is three inches, but what I really want this to be is I want this to be five inches. So now I just type in five enter, and now it's changed that from three inches to five inches. Um, the next one is the mirror command. So I'll type in mirror, select the object. I will click on the endpoint, this endpoint, and this top endpoint. And again, mirror just you're just making a line, and it's uh, making your object symmetrical along that that line or that axis. So essentially, it just mirrored that object. Um, so a really useful one to have turned on is this, this points on. One thing some of you may have noticed is when this uh, when we use this scale one D command. We went from this line being 3 inches to being 5 inches, but the rest of this did not stay proportional. And the main reason why is because we only clicked from this point to this point to this point, it's only making sure that this line is actually proportional, not the rest. So if you want to make sure that something is proportional all the way around, you should use the command uh, points on. So uh, the command is the icon is over here, points on, or you can just type in points on. I select this object, hit enter, and now it's now turned on the individual points for this object. So I could now um, select these points. I'll turn the grid snap on, and I can move just those two points wherever I want or select another two points and again move them where I like 
So if you want to move something or a part of an object that is much more accurate, I would recommend using a point, points on command. And to stop the command, you can just hit and uh, I'm sorry, hit escape once or twice. I'll turn grid snap back off. All right, so some other basic commands, some 2D uh, line commands. The first one we're going to start off with is fillet. Um, before we start there, let me just say one one last thing. Uh, of these commands that we've used. Uh, move, copy, rotate, scale, scale 1D, mirror, points on. They're essentially all located right down here. So here's the move, copy, scale, or rotate, scale. If we click uh, on where, where the scale command is, just click and hold down. There's more icons hidden inside there. So here's scale, and here's scale 1D. To find the mirror command, again here's the move icon, click and hold down, and hidden inside here is the mirror command, as well as the other commands, your scale, rotate, copy, move. So the reason why I'm saying this is as we're starting these new set of um, commands, they're all located inside here. So here's different ways of drawing curves, and to edit these curves, these icons are located inside here. So here's, for example, fillet. The next one we're going to do is chamfer. So just in case you're wondering where these icons are located, uh, I'm going to type in some of these commands, or click on the icon. Uh, so we'll, I'll start off with fillet. And by default, uh, I'm going to put the radius at 1. So I'm just going to click on radius and just hit 1. And I'm going to click on the top uh, left corner. I'm going to click this this line and this line. And it should give me a fillet with a radius of 1. Right. So I'm going to repeat that command by hitting the spacebar. Normally within these Rhino commands, the very first uh, option that you have, uh, you don't necessarily have to click on radius. Say, for example, uh, I just want to make this one a radius of 2. The very first option, whenever you type something, it always understands that that's what you want to change. So I can just hit 2, Enter, and now I just change my radius to 2. Or I can repeat the command by hitting the space bar and hit 3, Enter. And repeat that command with hitting the space bar and hit 4, Enter. So that's fill it. Uh, next is chamfer. Chamfer is similar to fillet. Uh, the one thing that I want to do is over here where it says distance, I want to make sure that it says 1 and 1. So distance 1, 1. So again, starting off on the top left, I'll click this, uh, this line and then this line. And essentially what chamfer does is it finds that, that, that point where they connect and it goes, uh, I think it's in the X one unit, and then in the Y one unit, and then it connects those uh, with a line. So again, chamfer works in the same way as fillet. So if I hit spacebar, instead of having to click over here and type in 1, 1, I can just hit 2, 2, or 2, enter 2, and click on those two. And it does the same thing. Or I can hit the space bar to repeat chamfer, and I can do 1, enter, 3, enter. And click those two lines, or hit the space bar, and I'll do uh, 2, enter, 4, enter. And click those two. And there's chamfer. Uh, the extend command. I'm going to type in extend. What extend does, or what it will do, is I have this line, this vertical line, and I have this horizontal line. Essentially, what I want to do is take that end point of that horizontal line and extend it so that it's touching this line. So I type in extend. 
if at any point whenever you type in a command uh, you don't know what to do, just follow the command line. So in this case it says select boundary objects to enter uh, or enter the link. So I'll select the boundary, press enter when done, and then the curve that I want to extend. And then escape. So now that's it, it's just extended it to touch that line. Uh, trim. I'm going to trim off that tiny little piece over here. So again, I'm going to type in trim. It says select the cutting objects. My cutting object is this vertical line. I hit enter. And then it says select object to trim. So I select this little part and now it's trimmed. And I can hit escape. Uh, another way to use the trim command. Instead of selecting individual objects, I can just select everything and hit enter. And what I want to do is I want to trim off these little pieces, but instead of clicking them individually, I'm just going to make a larger um, dashed uh, selection rectangle. And I can trim all of them at the same time. And hit escape. The next one is split. So what I do, I'm going to start off by splitting one of these two lines. Right, so I want to start off by splitting this vertical line right where the horizontal line touches. So I'll do type in split. I'm going to read my command line, select objects to split, press enter, and then select cutting objects. So now it's split this vertical line exactly at that point. I'm going to run split again. Uh, this time I'm going to split all three of these with this one. So now it's split each one of these again right at those points. Uh, next is offset. Type in offset. I'll keep it at a distance of one and just to make sure that we're all in the same, uh, have the same settings, let's just make sure that distance says one, corner should say sharp, and cap, the very last one, cap should say none. So essentially what uh, what this will do is it'll I'll start off with this line. I could, When I offset something, I can only go in one or two directions. Uh, essentially in this case it's going parallel to my line. All right, so I can just offset this with a unit of one. If I happen to have a series of lines that are all joined, when I type in offset, if they're all joined, it'll offset all of them at the same time and retrim everything for me. A couple different offset options. Again, I'm going to type in offset. This time I'm going to do a distance. I'll keep it a distance of one, and instead of the corner saying sharp, I'll say uh, round, for example. And it only rounded off the corners in the direction of my offset. Um, if you want to round these corners, you'll just then have to come in and use the, uh, the fillet command. Uh, another useful one is I'm going to type in offset again. This time I'm going to go to um, distance one, corner. I'll keep leave it at sharp. And I can also offset something with both sides. So I can click this middle one. And when I click either to the left or to the right, it'll offset it in both directions at the same time. And then the last option, I'll type in offset. This, op this last one's uh, fairly useful, um, or one of the most useful ones. Uh, again, distance of one, corner, sharp, cap, equals flat. So I can take this, offset it, and what it's done is it's now put a cap on here. So now it's turned this into essentially a solid, or a uh, closed polyline which is pretty useful. Uh, another useful command for using fillet 
is say for example I want to close off this um, these two lines right one thing I, I can do is I can try to move one of these points extend the other one and trim the rest or I can just use the fillet command and put in a radius of zero and if I click this line and this line it connects those two points with a 90 degree angle because it had my radius of zero. And it doesn't matter how large the distance is. The only thing that does matter is make sure you're clicking near this endpoint and near that endpoint. And it should close those off. All right, the last couple ones is distance. So I'm gonna type in distance and I'm going to make sure I'm snapping from endpoint to endpoint and I'm getting this at 10 inches right? or I can do the second one from endpoint to endpoint and it's giving me 18 inches uh, because my units are in inches it will always give me the answer in inches or unless I tell it otherwise so if I type in distance by default it says units equals model units and my unit model units again are in inches, so it's giving me all my answers in inches, but I can tell it, I don't want my answer in inches, I want my answer to be in feet and inches. So now it's telling me this is one foot six, or say I don't want it in feet and inches, I want, it to, I want to know what that is in millimeters. And it's telling me what the answer is in millimeters. Right. And this is really useful, especially when you have long lines. I want to know what this is in feet and inches. I can click from this endpoint all the way over to this endpoint, and it's telling me that it's 13 feet 9, 13 feet uh, 9 inches. Uh, and then the last two things are special zooms. Um, the two types of zooms that are used quite a bit is zoom selected and zoom extent. Uh, zoom selected, the icon for it is this icon over here. Uh, or just remember the shortcut ZS. So if you zoom out a little bit, if you select something, just type in ZS Enter. And it, it zooms in on exactly what you have selected. Or if you type in ZE Enter, it zooms into everything on your screen. So again, just ZS enter and ZE enter. But that should be it for now for the, the basics of uh, using different uh, commands in Rhino.